it's one thing, it's one really fun and fascinating thing, to talk about who's going to win the presidential election and how they're going to do it. Trust me, I could do a whole TV show and a whole radio show about that every day. <laughs> but it's another thing to think about why on earth someone would want to be president of the United States anytime soon. Cleaning up after the reign of George W. Bush means starting with an economy that's on its way back to hunting and gathering, a national debt and deficit that dwarfs even what Ronald Reagan did to us, the world's dumbest, most expensive health care system that's brought us an infant mortality rate on par with great powers like Slovakia. And that's before you even get to the security and military challenges which we face, which are legion. Take, for example, today's news about our pseudo-legal offshore prison in Cuba, Guantanamo. If you recall, we're supposed to be in the process of closing Guantanamo. I'd like to close Guantanamo. <laughs> no question Guantanamo sends a, uh, you know, a signal to some of our friends. It provides an excuse, for example, to say the United States is not upholding the values that they're trying to encourage other countries to adhere to. Well, it turns out President Bush is not going to close Guantanamo. The New York Times reports he never even really considered proposals to close it. And a Bush administration official suggests that Guantanamo will be an albatross around the next president's neck, saying, quote, the new president will gnash his teeth and beat his head against the wall when he realizes how complicated it is to close Guantanamo. Defense Secretary Gates disagreed today. He said this, quote, this is an issue that will have to be addressed early on by a new administration. So we can get past this and close it. So thanks for handing that one off to the next guy, President Bush. Also, there's the small matter of Iraq, where despite the dearth of headlines, there are about 150,000 American troops and an even larger number of contractors still stationed. The UN mandate that makes it legal for our troops to be there expires at the end of this year. The Iraqi government, despite months of negotiations, appears not at all capable of or willing to work out some sort of new agreement so our troops can stay there, which means U.S troops will not be allowed to remain in Iraq after the end of this year. Does anyone have a plan for that? President Bush, apparently, not so much. Secretary Gates, he said this today, quote, the consequences of not getting an agreement are very real. We basically would stop doing anything. That's the plan? That's the official plan? So the issue of the legal black hole of Guantanamo and our 150,000 troops in Iraq, these are essentially being handed over to the next president while they're actively on fire. And with Guantanamo and Iraq in the what are we supposed to do about that category, there's also the increasingly awful prospect for the next president of a renewed, revivified war in Afghanistan. NBC's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, has this week filed some incredible reports from the most dangerous parts of Afghanistan. High on a ridge in the Korangal Valley, Firebase Restrepo is little more than a huddle of shacks and tents. One guard post is so bare, so small, soldiers had to carve it out of the mountain. All this was broke down. It's been all busted. They build the reinforcements because Al-Qaeda and the Taliban attack almost every day. We shoot nine, nine, and shoot three. The Taliban opened fire from just a few hundred yards away. Get some! But Private First Class Jordan Taylor's gun keeps jamming. 240's down. The machine guns aren't working either. Another weapon up here, Tower 1. And we're going to watch out! For the second time in less than 24 hours, this outpost has come under attack. Some of the incoming rounds were so close, we could hear the crack past our heads. Now they're putting out suppressive fire to try and push back the attackers. They've also pulled in mortar fire. Left 100, drop 5054, effect over. The mortar teams fire wherever they think the Taliban might be. But they rarely see the enemy. Too much cover, too many trees. After about 15 minutes, this attack at Restrepo is over. Hold your fire. The soldiers spend the rest of the day cleaning and repairing their weapons so they won't jam again. All right. Works. If the weapons fail, Restrepo could be overrun. They know they're stretched thin. More men would help. Um, we really we don't have that luxury right now, so we just do what we can with what we have. And they can never let their guard down, expecting more attacks are coming.
Richard Engel reporting from the war zone in Afghanistan. Just incredible footage and reporting from him. We have spent a lot of time uh, for the last two years assessing which candidate will make better choices than George W. Bush made. When you cast your vote, you've also got to think about which of them is better equipped to manage the flaming heap of problems, even these national security problems that Bush is leaving on his desk when he is out of there in January. Joining us now is New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson. He served as the United States Ambassador to the United Nations during the Clinton administration. He's now supporting Barack Obama in this election. Governor, thanks very much for joining us. Nice to be with you, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, the current president is handing over a mess to the next one. I've just spoken specifically about Guantanamo, about Iraq, about Afghanistan. Would you rather that President Bush tried to resolve any of these matters, to have a plan for any of these matters before he leaves? In, in some ways, is it better for him to let the next president try to fix his messes? Well, not really. Uh, basically, uh, what it seems President Bush is doing, he's punting. He's, they've checked out. And that's uh, kind of irresponsible because there's three months to go. Uh, there's no reason why he can't shut down Guantanamo. He can do that by an executive order and, and transfer those detainees to our courts, to our military courts. Obviously, you want to have safeguards so they don't come into the United States and stay forever. But I think this can be handled as it should have been through our military military court system which is very good on Iraq and Afghanistan look he could work an agreement out with the Iraqis or announce a plan that is consistent with the Iraqis that now seems to be embraced by Senator Obama of a safe and orderly withdrawal. I would do it sooner than later. Backed up by diplomacy, backed up by a multinational force in the region, backed up with negotiations with Iran. I mean, this is something that President Bush could at least uh, send a signal. And then in Afghanistan, the situation is, uh, I don't know if we have three months to make the situation situation salvageable. The worry I have is uh, the absence of equipment, of more troops, uh, that young American saying we need more help, uh, they're under siege. You know, this president needs to uh, recognize the error of our foreign policy ways and at least set up structures so that when Senator Obama hopefully comes in, you know, we can continue an effort to disengage from Iraq, shift forces to Afghanistan, and the probably the big biggest uh, black mark on our moral leadership around the world and is this Guantanamo prison, which even Robert Gates, the uh, Secretary of Defense, recognizes we have to act on. It's such a black mark. And, and just to wait and punt and do nothing, it, it's very disheartening. Senator McCain has made the case that because of his 26 years uh, in Washington, he's been involved in a lot of national security issues as a legislator, and that's why he would be well equipped to handle these sorts of crises. What is the case that Barack Obama, that leads you to believe that Barack Obama also would have, essentially have the, the chops, the, the spine and the steel and the experience that he would need to be able to handle these things well? Well, if you look at the debates, if you look at uh, Senator Obama's service on the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate and, and his judgment on Iraq, he called this one right years ago saying it was a mistake uh, and that we should not engage there. Uh, what he has said in Afghanistan, he has laid out a concrete plan. Uh, we are going to put more resources in Afghanistan. Uh, we are going to go to the border. And if we have actionable intelligence of terrorists, bin Laden, we're going to go after him. He he has said that he wants to shut down Guantanamo. Uh, he has made that very clear. Uh, you know, Senator McCain's policies are the same as President Bush. The surge is working. Keep our policy the way it is in Iraq. That's that's not going to work. He has not. He finally recognized sending more troops to Afghanistan after Senator Obama made the point forcefully. And on torture, uh, Senator McCain has said he's against it, but he's back and forth. Uh, I I don't know what his latest position is. Uh, so all these years of experience cannot compensate, in my judgment, for a Senator Obama's principled. Uh, he is uh, engaged. He has shown good judgment. Uh, he is surrounding himself by people. Look at General Powell, uh, former national security advisor, a soldier, a Republican, basically saying Obama has the temperament, the intelligence to be a good president and to be a transformational figure. So I I think that experience argument is not very strong right now. New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, former United Nations Ambassador, thank you so much for your time tonight, sir. Appreciate it.